my lovely stamping friends and welcome to another edition of Stamping with Sandy, Stampin' and Blogging and a uh, little technique sharing. Today we're going to be playing with Stampin' Up Aqua Painters, these cool little guys. You get two in a package when you order them and what they are is they are little uh, water reservoir built into a little paintbrush which is kind of cool just pull the lid off fill it with water twist it back on squeeze it a little bit and you have an instant wet paintbrush as you can see by the water on my fingers and I'm going to show you how I watercolored this cool little card and um, it also uses a new stamp set from Stamping Up in the annual catalog called Remember You. Okay so a little quick supply thing here is the Remember You stamp set and we're going to be using the big leaf image here and the sentiment actually and the sentiment comes out of box number two. Ink for today we're going to be stamping our image with stays on because it is uh, waterproof and of course we're going to be getting it white, wet, my goodness, just had lunch. I'm not sure where my brain went. Okay, so we need a light and a dark, so we're using a Mossy Meadow and Pear Pizzazz, and I'm going to be shadowing with Sierra Sand. And I will quickly finish the card for you at the end of this, hopefully, if it doesn't take too long. So let me just give you the cardstock pieces. Mossy Meadow, four and a quarter by 11, you're going to score so that we can fold that at five and a half. We have a piece of basic black four by five and a quarter we have a piece of stamping up watercolor paper this is three and seven eighths by five and one eighth and then we have a piece of english garden and this is one by three and seven eighths and then there's a black mat for that and it's one eighth inch bigger at one and one eighth and by four and i also cut out a little tag with the tags and labels and i used this one right here over in the right hand side so it is the smaller of the two big ones. Okay, so enough gabbing already. Let's get on with the card, right? <laughs> I know. All right, so get out your stays on, and you want it to be really super inky. So if you've been using it a lot lately, maybe re ink it before you start this because the darker the lines, the nicer this little art piece is going to show up. And for my first stamped image, I went all the way in from the top right hand corner and I wanted a great big bold picture. I'm just going to pull this down so you can see it. I'm working on this one right here because that was going to be kind of my focal point on my card. And you'll notice I'm holding the stamp for a little bit longer. I want that ink to really soak in because watercolor paper is lumpy and really porous. So you want to take advantage of that and get these lines as dark as you can. So now I'm going to the opposite corner and I'm going to do the same thing. Make sure that you've got a piece of scrap paper on your work surface because as you can see I'm stamping off so otherwise that would be on my little stamping table. Okay, so that's what's going to happen when you don't get enough ink. Okay, so I actually prefer to ink this way when I get into these bigger stamps. I feel that I have better coverage. And I can fill that in with my marker later so I'm just really not going to worry about it right now. But hey, we all make boo-boos, right? That's part of stamping. All right, last one. See how I just got a little tiny bit down in that corner? And I'm going to do the same here, but I want it not to look exactly the same as that, so I'm turning my stamp a little bit more on an angle, and again, adding some pressure to the stamp, but really try and not rock it, because if you happen to get your ink up on the edge of the rubber here, that will transfer to your card. Okay, so we're ready to start coloring. We're going to be using ink pad lids, so you'll notice that I am squeezing them together in the center before I open them. I'm not going to open that one right now, because we don't need it till the end. You want to make sure that your green is dry before you go in and do your shadows, otherwise it's going to run. All right, so there's my light and my dark. I have a piece of very well used paper towel. You can see the colors I've been coloring with lately. And I'm going to squeeze my pen just to get it started. I want one drop to come out just to make sure it's running properly. And then what we're going to do is we're going to start water coloring, but I'm going to um, zoom in a little bit so that you can see it a little bit better. Okay, there we go, up close and personal. And if my head gets in the way, I'm sorry. I still don't have my new glasses, so I'm playing with some cheaters, and um, I'm not seeing very well with them, so bear with me here. Okay, so I'm starting with the lighter of the green, and I am going to use it to flood the area of the leaf. The entire thing, okay? 
You can wet them first if you want, but this actually does two jobs at the same time. You're adding your base color and you're getting your paper wet all at the same time. And work in two or three at a time because what you want to do is you want to pick up this darker green and you want to add it while the paint or the paper is still wet. Talking and working at the same time today is not working well. Okay, and so what I did with this one was I went for the little hash lines that the artist has put into the leaves and I'm using that as my reference point to of where I would like to put my darker color and there's also some instances where I would maybe like a little bit of shading so I'm adding a little my own as I go okay so again I'm coming over here I'm going to flood in my base color and that's my pear pizzazz just in case you weren't paying attention all right again I'm going to wet three more leaves just like that and then I'm going to bring in the darker color and see how it blends really nicely because the paper's wet that's what you're going for if it gets too dry you're going to know it because as soon as you do your little streak it's just going to sit there and it's going to look at you and it's going to say hey we're out here with the crickets nothing happened and then what you can do is you can just wet it and let it run Okay, and you'll notice that I'm going back and forth on my piece of paper towel. This is how you clean in between. You just wipe it on your paper towel until there's no more ink in it. And then what you can do is you can come back over to your other color, pick it up, and carry on. All right, so you get the idea. There you go. Now don't you wish you could color that fast? <laughs> Gotta love double speed. Okay, so for the next step we're gonna shadow. And a couple of things that I look at. I look at, I made a little boo-boo here, so guess what? I think that my little piece of designer paper was probably going to cover that quite perfectly, so I'm not going to worry about it. If I turned it this way, I would have to worry about it, but that's the cool thing, is I have nowhere near finished, so I can do whatever I want with it. The second thing is, is I need to know where my sun is. So what I like to do is I draw myself a little sun over in one corner, and that reminds me that that's where it is, so I want the shadows on the opposite side from where the sun is. So I have my my Sierra sand and I squeezed it together I'm going to be working with the ink out of there and just a warning that the browns go on a little bit darker than you're used to so tread lightly for the first little bit and just um, give it a go and see how you like it and then what you're going to do is you're going to stay on the right hand side of basically all of the image and you're just going to start adding your little shadow in okay and you can always go back a second time and make it a little bit darker. But remember, it is really, really, really hard to take ink away once you get it down there. Um, so, like I said, tread lightly for the first go around or just until you get really comfortable with it. And you're just going to work your way around. And you see, as it starts to dry, you get really a nice little bit of depth from doing this, which is kind of cool and it doesn't need to be exact. Um, water coloring is never perfect because the water kind of takes ink where you want it to go and you know that's one of the reasons that we love the technique so much so just go with it. Get, time yourself. Say I'm going to do this in two minutes and I don't care if it's perfect. Alright so I'm getting down to the nitty-gritty here back into this corner and I'm not worrying about too much down here because remember most of it's going to be covered just the pieces that I think might not be I'm adding a little bit but isn't it cool how the image is just all of a sudden popping right off the page that's what a little bit of brown will do for you um, just in your shadowing 
All right, I think I'm happy with that. I'm going to leave it alone. Okay, so while you're waiting for your little art piece to dry, there's one other thing that you're going to do. And you're going to take this sentiment and you are going to stamp it on a scrap piece of Whisper White. Sorry, I'm down below where I should be. I'll have to zoom out just a little bit. I just want to show you how I did this. Okay, so here, we got this little guy. And my camera's having fun. I have learned that I have to keep something dark in my picture, otherwise it decides to refocus on itself all the time. Okay, so zoomed out a little bit so that the camera will quit messing around, and uh, I'll show you what I did here. This is a long, skinny sentiment, and I wanted that long, skinny sentiment to fit on the tag that I created, okay? So what I did, and I don't have my cutter with me, so I'm just going to use my scissors because that's normally what I do anyway. But the Stampin' Trimmer works awesome for this. Okay, so first of all, I don't need the word and, so I'm getting rid of it. Then I'm going to just come in and I'm going to trim all the way down for the rest of these. So now, it's not an inside sentiment anymore, it's a sentiment for anything. And the words that I want, I'm going to slice just like that. Okay, so now I've got for you. I have grateful and I have I'm so wonderful right so my little tag also has some little curly cues at the top I wanted to show you how I got those this is a lovely piece of the one and one quarter inch jute and it's quite wide but what you can do is you can grab the end of it and you just grab one of the um, elements and if you gently gather and pull you can get one whole very awesome string out of one of these and this will last for like I don't know 15 cards <laughs> and so what I did was I folded this in half and then I folded it in half again I have a little loop going on here so I went through the little hole that I made I think I used my 1 8 inch handheld punch for that one pretty sure I did and then I'm going to put the tails through this little loop and there we go and the other thing that I like to do is I do not like to cut them all at the same length I like them to be a little bit more abstract than that so I take them apart when I'm cutting them so that I can get them a variety of different lengths I like that look and then I'm just going to use my snail and attach these right on here okay so now we have all our pieces so we can rip through and put this together um, I ran out of fast fuse, so we're using snail. Normally, if I'm using watercolor paper, I use fast fuse because it's lumpy and I got it wet, and fast fuse will hold it better, but hey, we're going to live on the edge today. There we go. So there was a 1 8 inch border for you for the mat, and then there's a quarter inch when you go to put it on the card. Make sure that you got this one at the bottom, the one that I messed up. That way I can cover it with my designer paper. Okay, so got that there. Then I have my designer paper, so we're just going to snail this little guy. And then he goes on the mat, just like that. And then you turn those little guys over. And we're going to attach this down the bottom, a little bit less than an inch, about three quarters of an inch. And what I do if I really want them straight is I line this up on my grid paper and I pick a line okay so there's one side there's the other side and then I line that up and then I know that I've got it really straight on there okay so just a little heads up for you and one of the many reasons that I used uh, Stampin' Up! grid paper when I'm working helps to line up your ribbon too okay so a whole boatload of half dimensionals on the back of my little tag and there we go okay so I think that these are a little bit on the long side so we're going to give this guy a little haircut there okay so now I could go around with my marker and I could zoom that up a little bit if I wanted to but I just kind of like it the way it is and there you go there's my little watercoloring trick for today hope you enjoyed the share thanks so much for stopping in and hey if you want about 450 more videos um, ranging from anything to do with stamping and stamping techniques or how to start a blog come on over and visit us over at stamping and blogging we have a super duper video library in there and we have you covered on just about every topic that has to do with stamping so come on over and give us a try thanks so much for stopping in see you again soon happy stamping